Hello everybody, those are watching, those that know me, um, I've been a bit quiet for the past uh, year and a half or something like that. I've been very very busy here at the retreat centre um, and the gardens, I'm trying to future proof the place so we have an abundance of food in the future that I don't need to maintain. I love vegetables but it's a lot of maintenance so I've decided to concentrate on a fruit orchard. A variety of cold hardy uh, fruits <laughs> you'll be surprised so keep watching because um, maybe you'll learn something or maybe you know already who knows um, so yeah I decided for the past year and a half I thought well probably about two years now I'm not going to do so many events and retreats and things so sorry for those that have been reaching out running one-to-one -one sessions and stuff I've been incredibly busy um, working very hard and on the side working here in the gardens and we've had a terrible year for weather but that hasn't stopped me digging and doing all sorts of stuff so I'm going to show you around and see what I've been up to. So for the past four years or so I've been growing um, cold hardy fruit trees um, from babies. <laughs> now they're probably about seven or eight foot tall because of the way I have been um, electroculturing them and uh, giving them good feed good breakfast lunch and dinners well probably just once a day but there we go um, some of you that know me know that I built a roundhouse many years ago and involving in um, out body experiences and lucid dreaming being more lucid in in the astral realms I've had a lot more experiences as of late I guess because I've been trying to get more sleep and rest and been doing lots of studies in in sleep and hypnosis and dream states and lucidity and I've been a, a lot more aware in the dream state so what I'm saying this is that there's another realm that I go into that is a copy of this space and the roundhouse is still there and fortunately I pulled it down a year and a half two years ago um, I, I built it well but I could have done much better so we learned it's the first thing I ever built actually it was a beautiful space um, people loved it they loved energy it was known as an energy trap because it's like a dome there's no corners for spirits to hide um, so I built that and called it Zenith it was the first thing I ever built ever <laughs> and spirit helped me build it they helped me guide every process and I had no idea what I was doing some things I made up myself and wish I'd done differently but stuff I listened to bit of really amazing space so at the moment it's it's a weed forest over there not cannabis weed normal like natural weeds that come up and which we know as more medicinal stuff anyway I'm going to show you around the garden what I've been up to being super busy um, growing stuff in pots all here I'll show you exactly what it is um, and I've got a citrus orchards coming on too and a stream I've been busy building so I'll take you a bit of a tour so um, I put all irrigation in this is on a timer um, this one comes on in the uh, morning, very early morning, and it has a sensor on it. I really recommend these. Hosel lock sensor has a sensor on here, and it literally just opens up the valve. You keep this tap on the whole time, and it comes on with um, little drippers or sprinklers. So I have, I have four sets of, of this. I have one here, one at the back, uh, one of my citrus and palms, and then down the stream which I'll show you shortly so what I've got here stuff I probably will be selling at some point to get my money's worth back and some stuff I'm going to keep in pot still but I have a medlar I have nectarine I have a cordyline astralis which is a palm um, also known as a cabbage plant palm um, got cherry um, got damson plum another damson fig another fig um, Medlar, cherry plum, cherry, uh, pear. What we got on here? I think that's uh, Dunbury, uh hazelnut. What's this one? Cherry, I think it is. Pomegranate, pineapple guava, uh, pomegranate. A red kiwi which is actually getting really long so I'm gonna to have to plant that somewhere else at some point 
over by the arch I'll show you shortly. Another pineapple guava. Nectarine, which has got a bit of a disease here. Peach curl, not good. And an olive tree. So half of this I'm probably going to sell at some point. And um, yeah, it's been a great story, but I can't plant along there. I have other, other plans. I want to plant my citrus orchard at the back. So this is uh, another irrigation I have. Very easy to do. This is a manual feeder. It's not on at the moment. Um, but I've got all sorts of stuff here. More of the Mediterranean tropical side. So I have eucalyptus, which is a cold hardy. Everything here is cold hardy. I have a yuzu lemon. I have an orange tree, Valencia orange tree, a maya lemon, a uh, satsuma, cold hardy uh, flying dragon lemon. I have another Maya lemon, um, Valencia, Valencia orange, and a blood orange. <laughs> At the back, you can't quite see it. Perhaps I'll zoom in. I've got a, an avocado, um, which I've been leaving outside. It's doing well. You need to keep it shaded in a natural environment. And at the front here, I have all sorts of things like um, Fortunae. Um, humanus, it's all like um, palms, uh, windmill palms, etc. Got yellow fig, two yellow fig, which I'm really looking forward to. They're supposed to be really tasty. And I have a non cold hardy uh, lemon tree because I'm going to graft eventually uh, onto the rootstock of the flying dragon. And that's how you make these cold hardy. They've all been um, grafted to withstand down to minus 15 degrees in England once established so um, in the winter time I'm going to bring these inside in my like greenhouse area not greenhouse but it's like an enclosed extension part keep them in there over the winter bring them out in the spring away from the cold do that for the next couple of years and then I'll be planting them all around here and a couple of lemon trees here which would be beautiful. I'm also going to plant one in the middle here too, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, so yeah, that is my citrus area sort of panel. <laughs> um, I'll show you the stream soon, what I've been up to. Uh, had a training school come in actually. It's a lot of money to cut down trees and some of them prevent a lot of sunlight coming in here. This is a willow. This is the biggest one on the property. I reckon because it's here signaling where the ley line energy is. Hence the stone, standing stone, which is down there that I installed. So I'll take you another bit of a tour around the garden. So um, same thing here. Don't worry about the Buddha. He's not taking a pee. Um, <laughs> I have another Hoselock uh, sensor here, which uh, this one comes on in the evening. Um, no, sorry, early early morning, as soon as the sunrise hits. And it's all on an irrigation system, all the way down here, all these fruit trees, which I'll introduce you now. This is a brown turkey fig. I do have some figs on here, but um, I'm cutting them off as they grow. So I the energy goes into the plant itself. Then I have a damson um, plum, sorry no, it's a marjorie seeding plum, which would be beautiful. Now this tree, it became an arch. I don't know what happened, I've been keeping my eye on it for the last sort of six, seven years, and it started here and it just sort of fell over in a way, it fell over and it just continued it continued growing and then these are the shoots off of it so it's it's still very much alive so I decided to turn it into a bit of a seating area um, I collected all the red stone on the land so for the past 20 years digging up the whole of this garden I decided to uh, collect all the red stone um, not sure what type of stone it is but it's very solid it is I know it's rock but it's it doesn't chip easily it's it's probably like granite or something and I thought I'd turn this into a bit of a romantic setting um, so I have roses growing either side of the arch and the roses to grow over romantic setting overlooking the garden people to sit and talk a bit of privacy obviously in the summertime also 
Um, so going on to the more of the fruit trees, I've got a red um, Williams pear uh, tree. And then I've got a blue tit uh, plum, don't laugh, I know, blue tits. <laughs> and then a green pear. And this one is an ice crystal fig, so it'll be a white fig once established. All the figs that I've put in the ground are in a root control bag because the roots are very vigorous. So um, yeah, you have to be careful with figs because uh, the roots would just, the figs would just get massive. Poor poor, which surprisingly are down to minus 15 degrees as well. So I'm looking forward to that. I've got three of them in. They say you need three to really mate and get, get fruit. I've uh, got apricot, which I have a lot of apricots already on here like a lot <laughs> so it's good good yield um, another pawpaw all the pawpaws are quite small but I wanted to get them in another uh, apricot and the funneled third um, pawpaw we have a peach tree which is doing well no disease on here really happy and then a uh, brown turkey fig Got some figs on here, but yeah, it's doing well. All green. And another peach tree, which is doing well too, no disease. Unfortunately, the nectarine trees, which I really wanted, there is some hope, but it's not looking too good. Then I've got a persimmon tree, also known as Sharon fruit. This is doing really well, I'm really happy with that. And the same for the next um, uh, nectarine. Fantasia. Um, this is already five, two years old. Yeah, not doing well. And then the other Sharon fruit uh, persimmon tree. So all them are on an irrigation system all the way up through. So they are, they'll be fed. And they're on these little, little drippers, which you can't see at the moment because I have protected. There is a zoom in there. There is a pipe so I've put these over because of streaming I put rocks all around uh, to protect um, the the pipe of irrigation so it starts off down there and waters everything comes on for half an hour in um, in the evening well we've got the standing stone which is doing really well really happy with this and um, there's loads of little geodes of crystals in here. There's loads of little crystals. Um, all this face here is filled up with crystals. <laughs> it's really good. I, um, when I installed this, I put a very deep base in, anchored it, uh, grounded it even more so, and put loads of organite all around the base. So this stands at uh, about seven foot tall, and is a great focal point to the retreat center itself. So, yeah, main retreat center, seance building, physical mediumship, amazing. All my event stuff is at the back. Um, yeah, so it's doing really well. And uh, love these little Buddhas. They just really um, give some feel to the place. This pipe here is connected to the old well in case of emergency. I haven't yet plumbed it in or put a pump in yet but that's the plan to do that just in case something happens to our water system anything can happen there was a breach um, a month or so ago um, down south when people became very sick because of the water so if anything happens then I've got it tested we can't drink from it but at least it's a backup anyway so I'll get on with that now this tree is an apple tree gifted to us from a friend called Rick. Um, now if you look, we have three apple trees here already. One, two, three, and there was always a gap. And I always imagined an apple tree uh, being planted here. And guess what, what happened? When I was thinking about it, thinking, hmm, what should I plant there? Should I plant another apple tree? Literally a week later, our friend Rick came along with this in a bucket and said i've got a well a pop i've got a present for you he's been creating this new apple and he gifted it to us so that was a really amazing synchronicity um because 
not only did I want to fill that space, the universe sent me a person who wanted it to be planted here, so it was meant to be, so I'm really happy. Um, excuse the mess, uh, this is my dumping zone, I'm going to collect all this mess um, when I drive back here of the car, it's just easier. But I have another fig tree here in a root control bag, it's doing well. Um, yes, and for years we had these faces, so I recently I put this together. Um, two faces, <laughs> one at the front exactly the same at the back and this just gives some real character to the place so um, yeah I'm really happy to, to get these um, two faces put together so um, filled this up with stone I had a delivery of six and a half tons of um, blue liar stone turn up which was dumped over there put the new stream in I'll put it on and get you to see it in a minute um, so I had left over stuff, so I wanted to put it here. Now, this is where I've wired it in. It's taken a lot of work to do. Um, you just simply press the button, it comes on. You can hear it gurgling at the, at the top there. And eventually, it will start spitting out. Now this took me, there we go, it took me a good month or so. How I did this was I, had a load of rubble and stuff I didn't want so I made a load of steps out of um, uh, tires, car tires, I think about 30 car tires did a, a row at the, at the base of about 10 car tires, then a row of 6 then a row of 4, then 2 and just stepped it down and covered it over in dust sheets uh, covered in um, cement and um, yeah it's coming together really well I'm really happy with the progress I love palm trees, so I've planted about 10 palm, palm trees, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and um, redid the stream. This isn't finished, I've got to put another final layer of um, concrete mix on top. Funnily, we had this um, piping for years, didn't know what to do with it. It was always around, kept moving it for years, and then eventually I decided I'm going to turn that into part of the stream. Always had a wood stream here, I saw a wooden um, bridge and you know I'll just be slipping on it coming down here in the winter not really happy so I'm going to concrete it so it'll match all this and eventually go to the new roundhouse which is still there energetically but at the moment is all uh, the felled um, wood that I need to cut up for firewood so yeah, it's taken me a lot of work. Funnily enough, all these pebbles found under the ground here for years. I've worked on the lands here for about 20 years now, digging up everything you see, everywhere. I dug everything, not by hand, but we had digger in. It's on my hands and knees, collecting rocks. So all the rocks you see around um, was pretty much from under the ground, and most of it, um, but I had a lot that was delivered recently, six and a half tons. So, um, yeah, surprisingly enough, all the pebbles in here, um, apart from the very massive ones, because we brought them at a garden center, um, all, the, all the pebbles came from under the ground. So I basically recycled the whole of the ground here. So we have the main pond going in, water flows underneath um, through the, the stream and up through here. So it's been a, an amazing achievement. I'm really happy. My palm tree is doing well. I planted this 18, uh, 16, 17 years ago. It was a baby and now it's, uh, it, it's, it's huge. I'm really happy about this. So yeah, a lot of tidying up to do. This is all dead because I had a massive tarpaulin on where we had the truck come in to deliver a load of stone. So that is just yeah now we need to let the sun get to it to get some grass again but um this is just very beautiful to listen to and watch and water element for the garden so yeah water trickles through and um see it building up and it just passes underneath the bridge 
starts flowing out the other side and um, yeah it's beautiful it's lovely to listen to it's just exactly what people need to retreat from here it's been a long time um, coming um, you know working a lot and work you know busy in the garden most of the holes along here I dug a three foot by three foot by three foot hole a square hole it's called the Ellen White method mixed in with loads of compost and feed so these are going to have a really good good life ahead of them, all these trees. Um, eventually one day I'd like to get in there and rebuild a roundhouse, but not at the moment. I need a break from building. I've been so busy here for the past uh, couple of years. It's been an achievement and um, yeah, a lot of hard work. So... Uh, Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I'm just trying to get a beautiful space here going for people to come and relax to. Um, it's really needed. It's needed a lot of work. And as busy as we are at the retreat, um, we have been quiet, which has been a godsend really, because I've been able to make a lot of noise and mess and we haven't had anyone in. So... Um, it's good now because now we're just starting to get people in and I can take a step back and enjoy <laughs> and and give and do more talks and events so watch this space I look forward to connecting with you soon so I don't know what you've been up to but if you've enjoyed this video or learned something um, please leave a comment down below and um, blessings to you speak to you soon